this is hidden is here, and we can even have a look at the source code. Well, um, it's, sorry. Of course, it's disassembled um, source code, so it's less, not as nice as real one, but it's my method, so it's there. Okay, so I hope you're convinced I'm not cheating here. I'm gonna hide it now and launch my script. Wow, what I like is, of course, the end of it, success. Um, basically, I'm doing some work on the DEX file, and what you might like to see is that, a little bit above, it sees the method, this is hidden, and it's gonna hide it. I'm gonna show you that it's a bit above. There it is. That's the method that we're hiding here. Okay, so it's generated classes.dex, where this is hidden, so it be, uh, should be normally hidden. So I'm gonna show you that again with Andrew Guard. Andrew lies. Andrew Guard, I don't know if you use, you use it, but it's a very cool tool. There we have a look in Mr. Hyde's class. And there we see bytes to hex in it, invoke hidden, open non-asset, and who am I? And there is no, this is hidden. Hooray. Now, it's not just Andregard that doesn't see it. We can try some other tool. For instance, let's say, yeah, text to jar, text to jar. It will generate a jar, and then we can have a look at some kind of jar code, disassembler, decompiler, and um, text to jar, and show that. Now, I know this is awfully small, but don't worry, I'm going to make it bigger in a while. Um, <laughs> so, Mr. Hyde is there. So we've got the beginning there. We've got the name. Ah, we don't see all of it. Mr. Hyde, bytes to hex, invoke hidden, open non asset. Who am I? Okay. No, this is hidden. What else have I got? I've got another decompiler which is working on, on the, the jar. To jar and it's named Pro, Procyon or something like that. We're going to try that one too and see if it can see uh, our hidden, hidden method. So it's in Mr. Hyde class. There we see invoke hidden. Uh, it's going to be a little bit long. Open on asset like that. I'm going to do a grep. And we'll see if we find it. Public, uh, Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde, invoke hidden, open known asset. Who am I? Bytes to drink. But no, this is hidden. So it doesn't see it either. Um, what else? Uh, um, yeah, with back Somali. Let's try that one because it's a well-known tool to, to uh, disassemble some... Um, Android bytecode. So I've got back Smalley here, and I'll give it my text and put the result in a directory. And Smalley, and there again, have a look here at Mr. Smalley class. Mr. Hyde, sorry. <laughs> Bytes to hex, invoke hidden, We'll do the same trick, a, a grep is fine. Grep method will list all the methods in Smiley. So we see we've got invoke hidden, open non-asset, who am I, and bytes to hex. I hope I've convinced you that here that it's invisible. 
And now, well, okay, so it's invisible. Now I'm going to show it back again. So this is, again, just to show you my script. Again, I'm using, actually, it's just a helper script. I'm calling, again, my Perl script, hidex.pl, with some other arguments to tell it to kind of unpatch my DEX and show back um, that method I've been hiding. So there, and we're going to have a look. I'm not going to go through all the disassemblers this time, but Andrelize DDX. And normally, if everything went all right, we should see this is hidden back. There. So, Mr. Hyde, and list all the methods. And yes, this is hidden, it's here. And I can list the source code. Okay. So, back to the slides. I hope I've convinced you uh, there that, well, it works. It hides successfully the methods. So part of the code uh, as well as you want, and you can also reveal it if you want and show it back uh, to people who really need to see that code. Now, well, I've showed you it's working, but I'm sure you want to know a little bit more how it's working. That's actually what hacking is about, so we'll get into that. So for that, well, we have to detail a little bit what the text file looks like. Basically, there are three parts. One is the header, like most formats, and you've got kind of a bunch of arrays of lists, and then also another section, which is data, where, where you actually find the stuff. In the arrays, you've got plenty of different lists. You've got lists of string identifiers, lists of type identifiers, <laughs> lists of fields, lists of methods, all that kind of stuff. And they're all, in those lists, they're pointing to each other to an identifier, for instance, in the strings, or they're pointing to an offset in the DEX file, which ends up somewhere, probably, in the data section. And that's what, where we're gonna actually uh, modify things in the DEX file to, to hide the method. So actually, in um, one particular list uh, in the arrays, we've got a list, um, each item for the class definitions is called class def item. And that references, well, different type identifiers and also an offset to an interesting structure which is called class data item in the data section. Uh, I don't expect you to remember all the names, but it's good to have the names in case you just want to have a look at the Dalvik re reference uh, sheet, because you can do it for yourself afterwards. And in the class data item, well, basically it describes the class, so it will tell you how many fields, fields you've got in the class, how many direct methods you've got in the class, those are methods which are public, and static, for instance, and how many virtual methods you've got in the class and which those are. And for each method, well, it's, um, through, um, it's described through a structure which is called encoded method. And in that one, that's the very particular one we're gonna hack into, well, you've got three fields, only three. It's not that complicated. You've got an access flag, that is, well, if the method is public, private, static, protected, whatever. You've got code offset. So this is going to tell you where actually the bytecode is located in the file. And you've got a um, very specific field, which is called method underscore idx diff, diff, which is a difference in method identifiers. So. Let me explain. What happens is that you've got a list of methods. The first method in there is going to reference um, the method identifier it corresponds to. Let's say this is number 13, for instance. The second method, just after uh, that, that one, is going to say, okay, my method identifier is maybe 
14. So I'm just showing the difference. I'm just saying increment one, and it will have method idx diff equals to one. Okay, so it's just kind of a handy way to go through all the method identifiers. Now the trick. What's the trick about? Well, actually, it's just about rechaining the methods that you see in the text class. And um, what we're going to do is actually we are going to, for the hidden method, we're going to either point twice to the previous method or twice, for instance, to the, to the next method. And that way, when people are going, well, well, when the code, the, the, the Android uh, phone or emulator is going to parse that, well, they're not going to see the method in the list, actually. So what we do uh, for that is, and that we'll have to modify the method idx diff field, and for the hidden method, for instance, we'll say uh, zero. It has no difference. We're going to stay with the previous method. We also modify um, the, the method idx of the next one so that the next one um, will increment correctly to the corresponding method. And then for, we also have to reference twice um, the code offset of either the previous method or the next method. And the other fields, well, you can, you can just leave, uh, leave them untouched. You have nothing to do about it. You can leave the same access flag. You can le uh, leave the same um, sizes for the direct methods or uh, virtual methods um, array. It works. Let's show it with a figure. Um, perhaps it's simpler that way. Well, um, here we've got three different methods, method A, B, and C. Method A uh, references, well, the identifier for A and the code for A. Method B references the type identifier for B and the code for B, and C, the code for C and the identifier for C. We want to hide method B. One way to do that is to reference twice the first method. So we'll have B actually reference type identifier for A and code for A, right? That's exactly what I'm doing. Or other method, just as you prefer, referred, uh, reference twice the method which is just afterwards. Now, a little bit perhaps more advanced, um, I said that you don't really need to modify, for instance, the access flag. If you want to modify it, you can, but you've got to make sure that um, you are not modifying the access flag in a way that you would change your method from a direct method to a virtual method. So, say if your method is public, which means it is called a direct method, then you must make sure that if you modify the access fly, flag, it remains direct. You can change it to, to static, that will work, but you cannot do it to something totally different. That's one point. The other point also is I said, well, okay, we're going to reference for, uh, either the first method, the method just before, or the method just after. So you might be wondering, okay, what happens if I've only got one method? How am I going to change it? Well, it's possible, actually. In that case, it's kind of a specific case. What you just have to do is, in the, in the description of, um, of the class, you say that either direct methods, the, uh, the array for that has a size of zero, or virtual methods, depending which one you want to hide, and you nullify um, all the structure for the encoded method that, can, that corresponds. And your DEX still remains valid and usable. Well, remains valid. Um, you've got some more work to do, actually. Uh, the, the only kind of small work you've got to do is that you've got a, uh, a hash on DEX executables. So, of course, once we've modified a few fields inside, we have to rehash the DEX and then redo the checksum. Okay. I've got a tool to do that. Anyway, it's really pretty simple. It's just a few, it's a very small script, nothing difficult. 
And when you've got your new DEX modified that is valid and recognizable, while well, you've got to uh, rebuild your application, and that is really pretty easy. You just get the previous one, unzip it, retrieve the resources, retrieve um, the manifest, and recreate using the patched uh, DEX, recreate a new APK, a new application uh, with the modified DEX. You've got to sign it also to, to make it useful. Right, so now you know how to hide a method and show it back again. That's cool, but I think we can do it a little, a little bit even cooler is that actually we can call the hidden method. We can use it, when it once it's hidden. So this is kind of a little bit more tricky. So to show you how this is working, I um, built also another proof of concept uh, application. And um, it's really a basic application. It's, um, it's made from, taken from a book. I don't know if you, you know that book. It's a well-known British book, I think. Um, the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, in that book, well, Dr. Jekyll uh, suffers from split personalities. And from time, most of the time, he's the good Dr. Jekyll, and sometimes he turns to, into a horrible man, which is named Mr. Hyde. So I kind of built an application, which is a virtual Dr. Jekyll, and um, what I do is that from, most of the time, that application is Dr. Jekyll, and if I manage to call, this is hidden, a method, it will change the personality of my virtual application and have it move to Mr. Hyde, okay? The only way in that application, guaranteed, the only way for it to become Mr. Hyde is to call the hidden method. Demo. Okay, so I've got an Android emulator here, and I'm, uh, the, yeah, the application that I built, Dr. Jekyll underscore, well, no, uh, yeah, release.apk. I'll show you once more that this is hidden, the method is hidden. Analyze APK and there we go. No. Yeah. No, demos never work. Eh. There we go. Classes. Again, we're going to have a look at Mr. Hyde. Your methods. Show me your methods. Right. See, bytes to hex, init, invoke, hidden, open, non asset. Who am I? But no, this is hidden. This was just to make sure I'm launching the right one. So it's hidden, we don't see it, but though it's gonna be able, we're going to be able to call it. So I'm going to install it in my emulator. By the way, you see that it successfully installs, which is good, which means that my DEX file is valid. It had the, the Android machine does not see anything wrong with it. And we're going to have a look there. There it is. It's that method there, sorry. Hide and seek. That's about there. And I like to show usually um, the logs, system logs. Meanwhile, don't worry about those for now. There we go. So I'm going to launch the application. I told you, it's really simple, basic POC. I am Dr. Jekyll, and now, if I press this button, it's going to normally call this is hidden, and I'll change, if it successfully calls this is hidden, it's going to change me to Mr. Hyde. Yeah, I am Mr. Hyde. I should have put uh, an ugly picture there. I'm sorry. Didn't have time to finish that one. And we can see in the logs, well, I've put a few logs in the methods, uh, this is hidden, just to 
you know, while I was debugging, and it's pretty useful so that we see we are actually going in the method, uh, working with files and do this thing. In the end, this is hidden done. I'm just exiting the method and it works. So. Okay, so this is hidden, is hidden, but we managed to call it. So, how can we do that? Well, the, we saw how to um, do the, the text modification part so that it hides uh, the, the method called this is hidden. But now, how do we manage to actually run the modif the, that text and <coughs> modify it so that, uh, well, we are able to call the, the hidden method? There are four steps. First, we've got to load, actually, ourselves to load the DEX file. And to do that, well, we use a function uh, which is in uh, the Android SDK, which is called open non asset. And we're going to call it on classes.dex or our dex file. The, the method uh, open non asset actually is not directly accessible from the Android SDK, so I've got to use Java Reflection for that. It just makes the things a little bit more complicated, it means you have to, cla to call class for name, get method, and all that kind of stuff. You see the, the code just below of what it looks like. But the main idea is that, just calling open non asset. Then, when you've um, actually loaded the text, what you have to do then is to repatch it, well, to to undo the work we've been doing to hide the method. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it back a correct method identifier. One, for instance, it's just a difference, as I said. Reset again, if necessary, the access flag correctly. Reset again, the code offset correctly so that it really goes to the code that corresponds to this is hidden. That's the modifications that we've got to do. And then, well, we have to, uh, to open the modified DEX. And we do that with um, another uh, method in uh, the Android SDK, which is called open DEX file. Um, again, this one is not directly accessible. We've got to, do some, to use some Java reflection to call it. Um, it has also the kind of particularity of returning a cookie. Um, which is actually a pointer to the internal structure of the DEX. Um, and once we've got that cookie, well, we can call another method, which is called define class, which will actually kind of inst not instantiate, but create a new class based on the modified DEX. And then when we've got our modified DEX, which is accessible, well, we have to parse it and parse all the methods and look for this is hidden inside there, okay? And we get an entry for this is hidden, kind of a pointer there, so that we're able to call this is hidden. And this is how we run, uh, we run the, the method. Actually, to exactly run the method, uh, of course, we have to instantiate an object of the modified text then on that uh, instantiated object, we call this is hidden with the arguments that we need for that um, particular case. There is um, a slight trick that time uh, I encountered at first. Um, what happens is that the, um, the two classes, Mr. Hyde, which, is, uh, which has a this is hidden method, that is really hidden. And the other one, which is repatched to show this is, mythin, uh, this is hidden. Well, both these classes are actually, for the Android system, they are different classes. Although they are, in both cases, called Mr. Hyde, well, there is kind of Mr. Hyde 1 and Mr. Hyde 2. And that means, uh, at a development level, well, that you cannot access uh, from the Mr. Hyde 2, you cannot access the static fields of Mr. Hyde 1. So, for instance, if I was, I don't know, storing 
the virtual uh, personality of Dr. Jekyll in a static field, well, it would not be working because with the modified text, I would not be able to actually modify the value of the, of the field in the initial class. Same for static fields. So what I had to do, it's one idea among others, is to use shared files. So the split personality of Dr. Jekyll is in a shared file that both of them have access to and manage to, uh, to look into and see if, they are, if uh, we are under Dr. Jekyll's personality or Mr. Hyde's. There are other <coughs> possibilities to do that, of course. It's just um, a way of implementing things. So, hiding. So what, is, it, is that dangerous or not? What are the dangers? Well, yeah, of course, it's kind of dangerous because if you manage in a method that you hide to put something that it's malicious, well, it will mostly, most probably go unnoticed from people who are not aware of this because they're not going to see that with their disassembler. So it's a problem. However, uh, well, we are not, you know, just um, completely stuck. There are ways to detect that hidden method. Uh, this is what I'm going to explain here. Um, what's really important is that it's not shown to uh, disassemblers, but the method is all the way, it's always here. The code is there, the strings are there. So if you base, for instance, part of your detection on, on uh, well, looking or looking for given particular strings, you can find it or if you base your detection on part of the code in the DEX file, you can find it. Okay, it's not, it, it, it's there. It's just invisible to only some tools. So if, um, if you want to detect it, well, of course, you can use, well, my tool that uh, I'll be releasing, of course, uh, hidex.pl, which either um, can hide a method or unhide it. That's one solution. Also, if you know where, is, uh, where the code offset is of uh, the, um, the hidden method, well, you can disassemble that particular uh, offset. That's a possibility. Or you can look for strings. Or, of course, well, I, I've sent this hack actually to um, Google, Google security team. They are aware of it, so maybe they will be one day fixing uh, Android so that uh, there is some better consistency check for the text exe executables so that we cannot include something inside it that is not actually being used and uh, that, that's a possibility, for instance. Um, final demo. Yeah, we've got time. Um, this one is going to be about showing a little bit how to detect it. Okay, because I'm, I'm an antivirus analyst. I want to detect things. It's cool to be hiding them, but then uh, it's not always that cool. So, um, I said you could detect it with the strings. So, for instance, so in classes.dex.hidden, the method is hidden. I'll use, I, I really like Andrew Gart. And realize said, yeah. There we go. D T X. Analyze X. Classes. It's just completion. Decompiler. If I use it, what did I do? I didn't close the bracket. There. Um, Farty guard, Mr. Hyde, and okay, the, the method is not there. We can't see it. Cool. But if we have a look at the strings, for instance, well, you see the strings are there. Those are the strings which are in the code of this is hidden. So this is maybe your first indication uh, that something is wrong. If you notice that you are seeing strings, 
there in your application and that actually you don't see the method which is corresponding or using those strings, well, maybe it might be that the method is hidden, for instance, that's a possibility. Um, you can actually use also the strings command on Linux. That's quite useful. And again, it's just a short way to do it. You see the, this is hidden strings, which are there. That's a way of doing it. Now, we can also disassemble. Uh, disassemble the code offset of, the, of that particular method which is hidden. I don't know if you recalled in the first demo I showed um, that uh, this is hidden, the method was located at a particular offset which was 144C in hexadecimal. Well, this is uh, by 196 in decimal. So what I'm going to do is call uh, Python script inside AndroGuard that I kind of um, inserted, added to the, the project, and that can help me disassemble a given offset in the DEX file. So, w what this does, it does, it, it says Android dice, call, uh, call it on classes.dex.hidden, that's the file we need to work on, and disassemble at offset 5196. Woo, there we go, gonna do it, there. So, this is uh, Dalvik byte code, and we actually recognize, indeed, that we are in uh, the method, this is hidden. In, this is, in, this, this is hidden, set master hide. Then I'm building some new strings again, moving them, printing, putting it in a string, logging that to uh, the Android system. Then remember we're doing some work with files and we see that a little bit later on. Get files there. So we've got all the code there of the hidden method. So here we see obviously, I mean it's not random code, you can see very clearly and very easily here it's it's something which was written, which is in the DEX file, but for some reason, um, uh, as you're getting it from an analyst point of view, well, it doesn't show. So that's the, the way to, to deal with those kind of, of files if ever we encounter them. And, uh, well, I think that's pretty all I have, yeah. So you've got, well, my, uh, how to contact me, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. The source code uh, is nearly all of it on the GitHub. I'll, I'll need uh, to upload hydex.pl in a few days, so just wait off for a few days and it will be there. Um, well, I think we've got time for questions a little bit, so if you have questions, not in Hungarian, please. <laughs> Yes, you're right, so um, just in case people did not hear, in some cases we see that the tool shows actually uh, twice um, either, the <laughs> either uh, twice the previous method or twice the second method, depending on how I patched it. And so in that case, we were seeing twice open non-asset, uh, that, that uh, particular method. So you're entirely right, it's a way of, um, perhaps detecting that something is kind of um, strange there and um, uh, possibly to look into it a little bit more. Uh, the problem with that, well, we've got to, to stay alert on it. The problem is that uh, from an analyst point of view, for instance, if I see twice the open non-asset method, most of the time I'll think, oh, this is just the same name but with a different prototype and I won't link, look into it. You have to really have a close look to it and see it's exactly the same method with the same prototype which is displayed twice. And that is not normal, of course. Yeah, go on. Uh, was there any malware found that was using this obfuscation? 
No, we haven't found any uh, malware using this uh, so far. Um, actually, what happened is that um, one year ago, I went to Hash Days, which is another conference in uh, Switzerland, and I wrote um, a challenge, an Android challenge for, uh, for them. And I was using exactly that trick, but uh, with only one method, uh, where I was just nullifying all the, the structure and removing it. And I sent that challenge to people, and well, it turned out actually that only uh, two persons managed to solve it, or maybe not many looked into it, I don't know. Um, so I thought, oh, well, it's interesting then if it really gets past uh, hackers. And I thought, oh, well, but I can just uh, actually hide one method, but could I hide whatever method I want? So I did a little bit more research on that and actually found out it could work for any method. And that's what I'm presenting. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh. Do you have a way to get a microphone up there? Because. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, so um, I'll repeat in, in case I get it right. Can you hide uh, only part of the f of the method and point to the middle of the f uh, the method? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have never tried, but I don't think you can, because um, uh, the beginning of um, the code offset for any method begins with a few uh, specific Dalvik bytecode. Um, to kind of initialize a method. So I don't think you could point in the middle because you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have that initial byte, uh, byte codes that would correspond to the beginning of a method. So I think it wouldn't work. It would be worth trying though. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Um, so the the anti methods to um, an empty, an empty method. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm afraid I didn't understand. Uh, I've got an empty method, and then. Um, well, in the case where uh, I have only one method, yes, I have to modify the length of the table uh, that refer, uh, refers all the, all the methods. I've got to say uh, we don't have any method there. In the case where I am just skipping above one method among several methods, I don't have to modify the length of the, of the array. If I do, actually, it will be, uh, it will be a problem unless it's just the last method, because if I say, I don't know, I have five methods, <laughs> five methods in, uh, in my array, and I say, um, let's say now there's only four, well, the last method will not be parsed. So if, it's, if that's not the method you want to hide, you've got a problem. Okay. Um, is that okay for your, your question? So I think we're pretty done. Time's over. <laughs> <laughs>